In this video today, I'm going to be talking about the only one order block that you absolutely need to know that will help take your trading to another level. This order block presents itself in the contraction phase, the first phase of the market. It's when price contracts and squeezes into a very small space. This is when the buyers and sellers become equal in the market. It forms a contraction box, which is a simultaneous lower high and higher low. We mark out the box until price breaks and closes out of the box. This signifies to us that it is going into the expansion phase. If price breaks above the box and stays above it, it creates a contraction line that projects out the center of the box. If price breaks above the box and below it, it creates an expansion line that projects outside of the box. This is a simple smart money strategy that you can combine with your style of trading. It becomes an addition once you know how to use contraction lines, expansion lines and liquidity lines in this way. You can combine it with your style. I also like to use it with supply and demand zones like I've shared in my previous videos. The number one order block is the contraction box. The contraction box happens when price squeezes and you get a first lower high and higher low occurring on the chart. Here's another example. High low, low high, we mark the box off. You can see this represents this box and this one represents this box. This is one of the most important aspects to become aware of on your chart. This allows you to predict the future since this is a leading indication of what is going to happen next in the market. We know that when price goes into contraction, the next phase is expansion. That is why we draw a box around it and we wait until price expands out of the box. Then we know that the second phase of the market has started. Contraction boxes are actually indecision candles. The indecision candles are on the higher time frame. And if we go into a lower time frame, that is where we find the contraction boxes. For instance, we use a higher time frame, daily four hour or one hour indecision candle. And we go to a lower time frame, 15 or five minute contraction box. These two time frames work exceptionally well together. And I'm going to be going through a strategy at the end where we use these time frames. A higher time frame indecision candle is a lower time frame contraction box. They both represent indecision in the markets and they both represent this balancing between the buyers and the sellers. Higher time frame indecision candle, but it must contain a lower high and a higher low. The same with the lower time frame contraction box, higher low and lower high. Higher time frame indecision candles must have this low high and higher low occurring simultaneously. As you can see here, this indecision candle, it's higher, low, low high. So it's showing the squeezing of price. Here's another example and another example. Here are some more examples of indecision candles and what they look like. They have big wicks and small bodies or big bodies and little wicks. These are signals to us when the market enters into this neutral zone where the buyers and sellers equalize and it comes to a zero point balancing of the books. Lower time frame contraction boxes must contain lower high and a simultaneous higher low. As you can see, we've marked them off here. As soon as price closes outside of the box, that's when we know it's entering into the expansion phase. And this is why it is a leading indication because it lets us know that what's coming next is volatility into the market. You see price goes into this contraction of price. We get an indecision candle with a low high and a higher low. Then we put a box around it. This is the contraction box. We wait for price to break out of it. This is a signal to us that volatility is coming into the market and that we are entering into the expansion phase. We have two different kinds of boxes that are formed, minor boxes and major boxes. A minor box is formed when price only breaks above or only below 
the contraction box. Only to one side. As you can see, price breaks up and it's only broken to one side of the box. So it stays a contraction line, which is a minor box. A major box is confirmed when price breaks above the box and below the box. We call this an expansion line. Expansion is the manipulation phase where price will whip saw into this range-like fashion to liquidate both sides of the markets. When you know this and you can anticipate it, it becomes an excellent trading strategy, trading the high of the range and the low of the range. Now that we have this expansion line, which is our neutral point, price likes to gravitate above and below this line. When the expansion line is actually confirmed, it confirms this line as the neutral zone or the neutral belief zone. This is the point where the market makers and the big players balance their books. Therefore, they drive price up and down constantly around this line, making money on the way down and up. This is the point where the banks, institutions, the big players, this is where they balance their books on this line. So it gives us a point of reference to be able to trade and focus around. Both the minor boxes, the contraction lines, and major boxes, the expansion lines, become very strong friction levels, even stronger than regular support and resistance lines. As you can see, price squeezes high, low, low, high, forms our contraction box. Price breaks out in this direct leg expansion. So it forms only a contraction line, becomes a strong friction level. This stays a minor box. Then we've got a low, high and high, low, which forms a contraction box. But price breaks above and below, which forms a major box. This also becomes a very strong friction level. Minor boxes are naked point of control and these act as very strong magnets for price price likes to come back to these lines and break them when we have this contraction box forming and price breaks only one side of it that is the contraction line we call this the direct breakout expansion when it only expands to one side if we can notice price is actually settling on that side, we know that it's going to move into the trend phase, which is the third phase. And this is where we get our greatest profit potential with our lowest risk. When we have price forming the contraction box and breaking above it and below it, this is what forms the expansion line. We call this a multi-leg expansion. This is letting us know that a range is actually starting and the range is going to range around this expansion line. Therefore, when price is above, we look for shorts. And when price is below, we look for longs. It gives us a natural framework to understand where and when to enter long and to enter a short. Critical points. You must understand this about this strategy. We use the higher time frame to discover and determine the bias, the direction, and the lower time frame is for our entries. If price is above the higher time frame, contraction line or expansion line, then we are only looking for long entries on the lower time frame. But our entries are always counter trend entries because we are anticipating these liquidity grabs which are designed to trick the retailer into making a mistake therefore making liquidity available for these large institutions to fill their massive orders once we know this and can anticipate this it makes it easier with the strategy so our entries are counter trend entries in the direction that we've determined on the higher time frame let us get into the strategy section where I can go into more detail and show you how to use this trading in real time. The higher time frame is used to discover our bias. What direction is the market going to move in? Once we are confirmed on our bias, it makes it easy to know what direction we're going to stick to, whether it's just longs or whether it's just shorts. The higher time frame bias can be used on a daily four hour or one hour what we want to do is we want to go to either daily four hour or one hour and mark out higher time frame contraction boxes, contraction lines, and expansion lines. 
Once we have that in place, we go to our lower time frame, 15 minutes or five minutes. And we do the same. We mark out contraction boxes, contraction lines, and expansion lines. But we need to make sure that the entries are counter trend entries into the direction that we determined on the higher time frame bias. Here's a little bit more detail. In this example, I've marked out contraction boxes and expansion lines on the four hour chart. We can see price is above this expansion line and above this expansion line. And you can even see the rejection to the line. This signifies to us that we're only looking for long positions and that price is on an uptrend and that the big players, the market makers, are wanting to drive price upward. Once we've confirmed that, we go into the lower time frame, 15 minutes, and we look for counter trend entries. So for example, we know that it's on an uptrend, so we're only looking for longs. Therefore, whenever we get a contraction box, price breaks above it and below it forms a line. We're only looking to enter longs below the contraction or expansion lines. This would have been our perfect entry. Here we go. Another contraction box is formed. Price breaks up and below. This would be another excellent entry. Now let's go look at the charts and I'll show you more examples. So we come to a new chart and I'm on CHZ USDT. It's a crypto coin. And the first thing I like to do is mark out the high low and the low high contraction box. I like to do the multi leg expansions. Right over here, we can see high low, low high on the daily time frame. So we're looking for this indecision candle that is a high low and a low high. And we mark out the line. We can see price broke below and above. This is our daily expansion line. And if we observe, we can see how price is actually respecting the line. Look how it responded to the line there. Look how it's stuck on the line here. And then it broke down, just broke above, settled on the line and continued up. And then we've got this action here. But you can see it's respecting in this line. Then what I like to do is I like to mark out the liquidity lines. The liquidity lines become excellent positions to enter and exit trades. When we have this expansion line formed, especially a multi-leg expansion, price likes to range below it, then above it, then below it and above it. Each time taking out the liquidity line, reversing up, taking out the liquidity line, reversing down, taking out the liquidity line. So prime entries and exits would be at these points. Now that we've mapped out the higher time frame, we open a lower time frame 15 minute chart. So we can have, as an example, the daily as the higher time frame, and then the 15 minute as the lower time frame for entries. Let's go back in time a little bit. I like to come on a lower time frame and mark out the daily expansion line. How the strategy works is if price is above the expansion line, we're looking for longs on the lower time frame. And because we had these two rejection wicks to the downside, can you see how these two candles are rejecting the expansion line, which is showing prices rejecting lower prices and it's settling and finding support in this region. When price does this, it gives us a strong indication that we're looking for longs on the lower time frame. If we go to the lower time frame, the most ideal entries are when we enter very close to this expansion line to ride the trend up to the previous liquidity line, which becomes the target. So if we can see that price is settling over here, immediately we go to the lower time frame and we can see price is finding stability finding support on this line exactly to the T. Can you see? As we see price settling over here, so we get one confirmation, we get two confirmations, and we see it's finding the support, we start looking for contraction boxes with the multi-leg expansion. And I see one right over here that would have really stood out to me. This becomes the 15-minute expansion line. And since we can see on the higher time frame that we've got price confidently settling on top of the expansion line. We're looking for long entries on the lower time frame, but these are counter trend entries. Price breaks above the box and below it, which confirms this line as an expansion line. Then we look to enter our long position underneath 
this would have been our zone where we would have looked to enter a long position and our target would have been the liquidity line up here or what we could have done we could have just taken scalps at this trade so every time price came below we entered a scalp and we exited at the liquidity line price came below again over here we can grab a scalp and we could have exited at this liquidity line then price came back down and you can see over here that we're finding this rejection to this line look at these wicks rejecting this expansion line on the 15 minute we could have rode that trade to the next liquidity line or we could have just held for it to hit this major liquidity line it's so important to always keep a view on the higher time frame so that you know where you're entering where you're exiting if you want to do these larger bigger trades but if you just want to do scalp positions small little scalp trades where you're just taking two to five percent of the markets but you can do that a few times then i'd recommend targeting the lower time frame liquidity lines and getting in at the counter trend entries underneath the expansion line and as it progresses we can keep looking for new expansion lines here would be another expansion line when we see this new expansion line price breaks below and up look at this whipsaw action taking out the retailer we can once again look for long entries underneath the expansion line and our target would have been the liquidity line on the lower time frame if we're looking for scalps so that's basically this strategy number one we're looking for a higher time frame bias. We're first marking out our chart in a higher time frame. We're marking out traction boxes, expansion lines, and we're marking out liquidity lines. We're waiting for price either settle above or below the line. Then we jump into a lower time frame and we look for entries in that direction. We mark out our contraction boxes. If, for instance, we're looking for longs because price is settling above the line, we jump over here, mark out our contraction boxes and expansion lines, and we start looking for counter trend entries in that direction. If we want to swing the market, we look to take profit at the higher time frame liquidity lines. If we want to sculpt the market, we look to take profit the lower time frame liquidity lines. Hope that makes sense to you guys. If you would like to ask any more questions, don't hesitate to message me and happy trading.